everyone and welcome to Obsessions of a Bookaholic. I'm Brittany and today I'm going to be doing the booktube newbie tag. Now if you've paid any attention or if you've seen any of the previous videos or even if you're just new here and just click on the channel, you might notice that this isn't actually my first video. But here's the thing, my last video was in August. So clearly I've been slacking on this whole booktube thing. Unfortunately university kind of got, kind of got a little better of me for about the past eight months and then I never had time to get into it and then excuses, excuses happen, I was working, I was whatever, anyway. So I figured that it would be fun to get back into this whole booktube realm by doing the booktube newbie tag and treat it like it's a fresh start. So without further ado, here we go. Okay, question one is why did you start this channel? So I think my question is probably, my answer to this question is probably going to line up with most other people's in that I just love reading. Um, I love talking about books, I love thinking about books, I love reading books, and I don't really have that many reader friends to sort of do this with, so I figured that joining a community full of people who do love to talk about and think about and read their books um, would be a good outlet for all of my emotions and my opinions and all of the pain and the heartache and the beauty that is fiction. Question number two is what are some fun and unique things you can bring to booktube? So, um, this question kind of stumped me because I think there's so many different channels out there already that a lot of us are going to have some similar tastes, some similar viewpoints, and I'm not really all that concerned with being completely original. I'm kind of quirky and I have my own little bits of weirdness, so I'm hoping I'll bring some of that and my own silly goofy side to the book too. But for the most part, other than that, I think maybe something I can bring to this would be um, some books that you might not have read or you might not know about. I get a lot of the books that I read from thrift shops or from the bargain section. So from that you might get some recommendations that you might not have thought of, things that you might not have known existed, or books that that might have completely slipped past your radar and then you find out that they're actually pretty good and you might want to go back and they might be worth the read. Question number three is what are you excited for most about this channel? Honestly, I think I'm doing exactly this. Um, I'm not really used to being on camera or to being the face, I guess, online. Um, I have my blog, my writing blog, which I started like three years ago where I like physically type out reviews of books. And I love that. And I'm more comfortable, I think, kind of behind the screen, but I figured this would be a good way to sort of test myself and push myself out of my comfort zone, so I thought that would be fun. And so I guess one thing that I am excited about is really pushing through that and then getting comfortable with that and digging into all these different tags and all these challenges and just all the reviews and everything that the book um, booktube community is and then seeing how then I evolve with that and if I confidence gets better or get more and more comfortable with this, then we'll go from there. Question number four is why you love reading. This one's tough to answer. Um, I don't want to just say because I love it, even though that's kind of the answer. Um, I think it affords a bit of an escape, and I know a lot of people say this, it's one of the most popular reasons that people like reading, but life is tough, um, and fiction lives are often tougher, and so sometimes it offers that brief reprieve from whatever I'm going through, or if I pick up this syrupy contemporary because I just want to feel good, or I pick up this deep and detailed high fantasy because I want to see something else, and I just want to be completely immersed in somebody else's world. It's sort of a transportation into something totally different, maybe something that I won't be able to experience here. And so I think it's amazing to be able not only to escape or take yourself out of your own life, but then to also experience these things that outside of books you wouldn't really ever get to experience. Question number five is what is the book that got you into reading? So I mentioned this in one of my previous videos, but since it's a fresh start, I'm going to mention it again. Uh, it's the Gallagher Girl series by Ali Carter about this girl named Cammie who goes to a school for spies. Um, and the next five or six books are spent basically full of kidnappings and missions and love triangles and adventure. I eat that spy stuff up like it is candy for one, two, I love adventure, and three, it was just the taste of romance that my sixth grader self needed to sort of ease myself into the genre when everybody was like, oh my god, boys have cooties or they don't have cooties anymore. Another series I guess would also be the Twilight series, 
by Stephanie Meyer, which is a popular one I've heard for getting people into reading. I read it that same year as I started the Gallagher Girls series, so it sort of all just goes hand in hand. I'll say like after I was getting off the high of the I Tell You I Love You But Then I Have to Kill You, which is the first of the Gallagher Girl ones, and then Twilight was right there and I just kind of picked that up and then I was just set for a life of obsessing over books. Okay, number six is what questions would you ask your favorite booktubers? Okay, um, how do you do this and do it consistently and find time and lighting and new ideas to do like all the time? Because I know I'm not the only one in university, but I find it impossible to do anything other than the schoolwork, the job, and the extracurriculars that I have, which is why my blog sort of takes a step back, my bookstagram takes a step back, and obviously these booktube videos are have also taken a step back. So how do you do this consistently without issue, or I guess with issue, and you overcome issue? Because I would love to know whatever tips and tricks you have for consistently reading and consistently filming and consistently posting so that the next year that I have, I don't completely fail again. Okay, next question is, what challenges do you think starting a booktube channel will be the hardest to overcome? I mentioned the getting comfortable with being in front of camera. That'll be something interesting to sort of boost. Also, definitely timing. I am busy. I know I'm not the only busy one, but I kind of freak out when I get busy and then I don't know how to make time for things that I want to do when I'm busy doing the things that I don't want to do or things that I have to do and then I just have no time to do anything at all. P.S. I will also consistently probably talk very very fast when I get heated or excited about something over the course of this channel. So stay tuned for more rambling. Um, so definitely keeping up on top of things will probably be one of the challenges for me as well as as I mentioned before when my asking questions please help me. Finding lighting, finding time, I need an empty house. That doesn't happen very often. I think I'm also pretty excited to try and work on that. Granted, I say that every year, but I am excited to try and work on that. I try to figure that out and get my own routine and then get really into it and start doing all these other tags and different videos for fun. Number eight is when did you start reading? I mentioned this when I was mentioning my favorite book. I've been reading since basically infancy, but I'll say definitely started that obsessive level reading that has gotten me to where I am today in about grade six, so I would think I was like 11 or 12-ish. We used to have these scholastic book order flyers that we would get in our classrooms, and up until grade five, we got all the primary school ones, so I was reading Geronimo Stilton and the Rainbow Fairies and stuff. My reading level was farther than that. So I stopped ordering things and I stopped reading for a bit of time. Then grade six came and we got the senior level book orders and that's how I found the Gallagher Girls one and that's how I started reading Romeo and Juliet and Shakespeare and all of the stuff that I absolutely love reading now. That was kind of the bridging, the entrance into it and that started in grade six because that's when I got the flyer and then since then I had been an addict without a cure. Um, question number nine is where do you like to read? A lot of answers to this. One is I like reading in bed, not when I'm about to go to sleep. I know people who read like a chapter before bed. I wish I was one of those people and I was capable of that. Unfortunately, I am not because I read one chapter and then I have to finish the book and next thing you know it's 5 a.m. I'm getting up in two hours and I am completely exhausted. But in my bed, usually until like 4 or 5 a.m. Uh, I also like reading outside a lot, so lawn chairs and not necessarily tanning because I burn like a lobster. but. Just being able to sit outside in the fresh air from time to time my pool. I also really like reading on the roof. Um, one of the joys of the suburban life and the way my house works is that my window, I can push it up enough and then just climb out onto the roof and the roof isn't too, too steep so I can actually go sit on it and I just crawl around the other corner and I can watch the sky and I can read my book. I fix that up especially when you feel like you need an escape. Question number 10, the final question is, what kind of books do you like to read? I don't really know how to answer this one because you see, there is the fantasy and the high fantasy and the romance and the YA mostly, this will mostly be YA, but then there's some of the adult fiction and I really like new adult fiction because it's most close to my age group and it makes me feel like I can connect to them better, but then there's mystery, mystery is really cool, but like murder mystery or true crime, stuff like that. 
So I will mostly read anything. So instead of answering that question, I think I will note some of my favorite books and I will sell some of the things that I will not read. Number one that I will not read is a horror. I hate horror. I can't do horror. I can't do ghosts. I can't do paranormal activity and any of those movies and definitely not reading them in books form because it just gets so much more real. I read a zombie book once. It's actually one of my favorite books it's called Alice in Zombie Land by Gina Showalter and y'all should check it out. In I think about 10th grade and I read it in the wee hours in the morning and I was sitting in my room and multiple times during the reading of that particular novel I had to jump up off my bed and I trotted on over to my door and I pressed my ear up against my door to make sure that those zombies or nobody was in my house because then you start imagining these creaking and my cats like to fight each other at night and it's all just very very uncomfortable experience so probably not a good idea when it comes to the horror stuff all the horror elements in fantasy books and stuff are some of the most exciting so we'll call it like a loose rule. Number two that I will not read, and you will probably hear me complaining about it again in any multitude of videos, is I don't like romances between best friends when they've been best friends for like forever. So if a book I find has that, I will probably stop reading it, set it aside, and give it to charity. And number three is I don't usually read those real deep contemporaries. I haven't read things like 13 Reasons Why, although I meant to, I haven't yet read um, The Hate You Give, things like that. I tend with reading because I prefer that escapism kind of thing. I like things that are going to pick me up or make me excited or suspenseful, but in the less, I guess, intense way. Um, I'm trying to break into that genre a little bit more. I think I should give it more of a chance, but I do sort of lean towards things that are going to give me that high fantasy element. Fantasy is probably my favorite genre, to be entirely honest, as long as there's a hefty dose of romance. In terms of favorite books, my top five are in no particular order because I'm completely indecisive. The Mortal Instruments series, which I think by now is pretty much a universal favorite. The Akatar series by Sarah J. Moss, which is also seems to be a universal favorite. The Witch Hunter duology by Virginia Boaker. It's basically like this historical fantasy set in sort of Tudor England. Really cool. A lot of alchemy. A lot of fighting and magic. Definitely recommend it. Four would be Heartless by Marissa Meyer because I cried and I swooned too many times to count and so all of the heartache and the feels that it gave me even though it hurt me in the end made it so 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 worth it. And then finally Kiss of Deception by Mary E. Pearson. I'm only the first one into this series. I mentioned it in previous videos because it is amazing so now that it's summer and I actually have time to read I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna get the second one and I'm gonna be enjoy it as much as I did the first one. Anyway that is it for my booktube newbie tag. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you guys will be back again. I will probably not have a video up next week just because I'm still working I'm still getting into the swing of things but likely the week after that and then I'll get into established rhythm and then hopefully they'll become more consistent. But for now happy reading and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.